guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics Seminary recording on Tuesday, January 30th, after the Celtics win over the Indiana Pacers. Celtics took home the victory. Uh, 129-124 was the final score. Put up a NBA record. Uh, what is it? 82 points in the first half. Uh, did 80, them a whole lot of good. 81 points in the first half. Uh, and then they, they blew it all. They scored all their points in for the first <laughs> they, three quarters in the first half. That's what happened. Blew it all away in the third quarter. Lost by lost the quarter by 12, I should say. Came back with a pretty solid fourth quarter. Uh, and ended up being back and forth. But they held the Pacers to 21 points in the final frame. So played some solid defense. Uh, even though the Pacers were slowly sneaking their way in it. They're, they're like a thorn in the side. The Pacers always stick around. Um, that's just the brand of basketball they play. Uh, but the Celtics, again, earned the win. Uh, have a nice little cushion in the NBA standings. Now four and a half games up on the Bucks. Uh, even more up on the Knicks and the Sixers. Knicks who have overtaken the Sixers in third place in the East, which is kind of crazy. Cool. Um, but yeah. I don't want to say good win for the Celtics, but a win for the Celtics, which is at the end of the day, important. <laughs> yeah, because uh, they didn't look good for a little bit in this game. And, and it's been <laughs> tradition as of late for them just to this is a throwback. disappear. This is a throwback and, game in terms of the offensive what, rebounding leads? for the Pacers. No, the oh, offensive yeah. rebounds being a problem. That too. But like, seriously, like Celtics had a record number of points in the first half. And still couldn't figure it out in the third quarter. They went cold. And wrinkle to this that I haven't seen a ton of people talking about. Granted, haven't been on Twitter. Halliburton was on a minutes restriction in this one. So he just kind of had to yeah. hang out as they tried to he was finish mad. this game off. Yeah, he was mad. Yeah. Imagine if he didn't have that, how it could have went. But no, I mean, positives. Really good Tatum game. Tatum picked the yep. spots well. He forced the issue yep. in the right ways. What did he have? Uh, he had 30 points, and he was four of nine from three. And mm. he took 10 twos. So, well, he was all over the place, and he did it in a really great way. You know? Yeah. To be honest, it didn't really feel like anybody – Chris Dobbs didn't shoot particularly well. It didn't really feel like anybody had a super bad game. It's just the Celtics as a team – let the Pacers stay in the game. Like it didn't feel like it was, Oh, Jalen Brown sucked like in, in this place, you know, Jason Tatum turned the ball over a million times. They just allowed, let's see what the final total was 19 offensive rebounds. Everybody, but Ben Shepard on the Pacers had at least one. You're not going to win many games like that. So the fact no. that they won is a good thing, but they did like Sam always says, they did everything they could to try to let the Pacers get back in this game. And they did. And I, I want to see the final number. Cause they kept <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me, putting it up on the, the broadcast. The Pacers finished the game with 31 second chance points to the Celtics six. The fact that they won this is a testament to how well they played in the first half and the defense they they um put on in the fourth quarter. They should not have won this game based on that metric alone. You're not going to win many games where you give up 31 second chance points. Like that, that's it. So they only did it because they put up 80 in the first half. Um, that was it was really, really, really bad. That one specific area. And like I said, it was a throwback game. They've been much better at controlling the glass as a team this season. I don't know what it was. They just like they they were scared of the ball <laughs> to the rim in this game. Yeah, it just seemed like every time you looked up, oh, they got to stop. Oh, no, they didn't. Nope. And the Pacers are just climbing back in, hanging around like. Even to finish the first half, right? <clears> there <throat> was a lot of talk about the Celtics. Oh, like, they're going to get the record. They're going to get the record, and they get it. But also, like, in the process, they let the Pacers climb up and take what? I want to say three points in the last 30 seconds off of them. Maybe more. They might have won by six in the last 30 seconds. And the Celtics had the two for one. So, like, even the possession numbers don't really say that. Like, the Halliburton banker really helped the Pacers, like, go into oh, the half yeah. momentum. But, like, I don't know. They just kind of took the foot off and did some dumb stuff. Like, the Brown, he was fouled, and then he wasn't three. I don't know. There's did some really it was deserve a weird. foul call there? There was another one no. early in the game. They called where that back, though. They did. But there was another one earlier in the game where he let Siakam come all the way out and then went up and threw the ball off the corner of the backboard and was like, where's my foul? So yeah, like, and then there was one it, where there, there is nothing to that. 
There's one where Tatum drove to the lane, which was maybe more of a foul, and he ended up just throwing it into the stands. And that was, was like, a what foul. Are we... That one I thought I, was I think actually a foul. Siakam had his hands on his back, but there there were a few of those moments where it's just like, what is happening right now? Mm-hmm. Um, and Pacers just killed them on the glass. Like who led the team, the Pacers, in offensive rebounds? Uh, Siakam had four. Neesmith had th- it was just it was completely <clears throat> rounded. Sia- Neesmith had three. Siakam had four. Turner had one. Heald had two. Halliburton three. Nemhard one. Jalen Smith two. Top and three. Like it was just even across the board. They were all attacking the glass, and the Celtics just couldn't get a rebound to save themselves. Um, <clears throat> like it, it, it got so frustrating. And cr- credit to Mish Kato. We can talk about him a little bit. He was a team high plus fifteen. He only actually grabbed one rebound, <laughs> which is like counterintuitive to what you think he should have been doing this game. He had Absolutely two blocks. The story but, of the night. I think I I've realized why people like Kato so much and they hate Cornette so much. You always say it. You always phrase it this way. The best thing Luke Cornett can do, and his only job out there is to not be noticed, unless it's for a good reason, right? If yes. Luke Cornett is playing well, it's to be noticed. Namiyash Keda is physically incapable of not being noticed. He is either the absolute worst or he is doing something sick. And there, there's no in between. <laughs> He's you either get it completely in the same game. <clears throat> yes, exactly. It is play to play. It is not game to game. It, it is possession to possession. He's either completely lost on defense, out of out of turn in his rotation, he, not blocking it on Jalen's ball and grabbing it, catching it, and or he's illegally yeah. turning the ball over. <laughs> that block he had on Jalen Smith too was absolutely goaltending. He should not have gotten that block. And then on the other side, he's posterizing them on a dunk. He he's getting a, a you know recovery block. He he's gra- crashing the glass. He's making impact plays. There's no in between with him. And, and for as great as he is in certain spots, he's also disastrous in other spots. And the, the good outweighed the bad in this one, I think, which is good. But um, Luke Cornett is a much steadier hand. Uh, but like it was, it, like I said, it was just a team effort in terms of blowing the game, which is very Respect. backwards. Um, you know how in the Pelicans game, uh, I was talking about how, or we were talking about in the first half, it felt like they should be down by a lot more. Yeah. This was a game where, to me, it felt like the Pacers should be down by a lot more, even when they were down by like fifteen, right? Like, yeah. like e- even when they were down by twenty. <laughs> excuse me, I think we talked about this the last Pacers game too, uh, when they lost when Halliburton didn't play the second half, which is kind oh, of exactly yeah, yeah. what happened in this one. Funnily enough, because the minutes restriction, um, <clears throat> we were like, it feels like the Pacers are still in this, even though they're down by eleven. Like, even when the Pacers were down by eighteen before Halliburton banked in the, the three to put them down by fifteen, I was like. It doesn't feel like they're up by as much as they are, and then lo and behold, you know that is? Half comes around and the Pacers played harder because the Celtics scored a record number of points in the first half, and they only had a fifteen-point lead mm-hmm. when the buzzer went off. Like I saw somebody well, tweet it, and I was like, "Yeah, like great point." Like from a standpoint of misery, like you just scored a record number of points in the first half, and you're only up fifteen. Like maybe well, get some stops. Well, the worst part is. They did get stops. They just couldn't fucking get the ball to end the stop. <laughs> well, that, that's how you get a stop. I know, I know, I know. But like, possession. I know, I know. But my point is like their first shot defense, I thought was pretty good the all night. But that doesn't mean jack shit if you can't get a rebound and they couldn't get a rebound. You know how you avoid easy. that? Getting a you, rebound. Uh, n- <laughs> yeah, you don't. You can just get a 24 second Where's violation the like they did in the clutch. <laughs> their best defensive possession I've seen in a while comes with 30 seconds left. That was three. huge. And they don't that even let the Pacers huge. get a shot off. They get two blocks on the same possession. Like, granted, offensive rebound, I guess, technically white batting the ball out of bounds, which is mm-hmm. what you do when you block the shot. But then Tatum gets Miles Turner underneath the basket to have the buzzer go off. Mm-hmm. Just really good team locking in on defense. So, like, you know it's there. We've seen them lap so many times this year on that end of the ball, it feels like. And they could just be more in control of that. And it's something I've said to you time and time again. Like, it's one of those controllable things. Yes, you're going to have days where guys can't miss against you, and it's going to happen. It was kind of what Joe said on, uh, well, as you're listening to this now, when Tuesday, Monday night, Monday night, Monday against, night after the Pelicans, when he was like, Yeah, like, you know, you game plan to leave somebody open, like Herb Jones, and he makes a bunch of threes, like just something you live with or whatever. And there, there is truth to that. And then they buckled down and got stops for the whole rest of the game because they yeah. they'd said, we're taking control of it. We're going to earn this. The NFL season is wrapping up, and there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets, guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. 
That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. Now, the app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays, find bets in the new Explore tab, make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Yeah, it, it was frustrating. Um, they held him to 31% shooting from three. Um, it's just that the Pacers took 108 shots to the Celtics 87 shots, which is like the fact that they won the game where they got outshot by 21. I mean, we, we do have a clip for the Celtics to help them out a little bit. In case you're curious, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's just the theme. How's that happen? Are you directing that towards anyone? Gentleman who just talked about getting out rebounded. He, he had the so he's gonna go get him. Sorry, Sorry he said, How do they yeah. have they I mean, have more you, rebounds? You, you said he got out rebounded. I was surprised you did 36 32. So, How does Yale out rebound Baylor? Um, you go up and grab the ball off the rim when it comes off, <laughs> and then you grab it with two hands, you come down with it, and that's considered a rebound. So they got more of those than we did. Nice little lesson for the Celtics after this Pacers game. Maybe try it sometime. Um, I truly believe, trade, like, trade for Torian Prince and coming. Oh, I, th- I thought you said no, actually. Yeah, I, I wanted to get to it because I knew you would like be like, oh no, wait, what happened? Um, like, yes, there were some times where I thought the the lane to the rim was too easy. Like, like you said, they definitely clamped down on defense more in the second half. Like, um, who wasn't Neesmith was getting far too many good quality looks all over the place. He finished 11 to 17. Like he was just getting to the lane too easily. Uh, I thought Turner was able to stand in the middle and get some shots. Although he only shot seven, uh, 18, but it seemed like a few of his looks were too easy. Um, but for the most part, I think the Celtics did a, a pretty good job of forcing the right people to take shots. Like Andrew Nemhard took a bunch of threes when he's not really a three point shooter um, like that. Uh, Miles Turner took a bunch of threes. He made a couple, but he, he didn't shoot very efficiently obi talk <clears throat> excuse me obi top and shot one of four jayla smith shot over three even though he's been like nails from three this season so i thought they're like their overall defensive process was good it's just none of it fucking mattered because they couldn't close out possessions and and there were a couple as there are any game where it's oh three big bounce of the ball goes right back to the outskirts where it's tough to get a rebound that's not what happened in this game, though. There were so many of them that were just right in their hands. Amy Ishkeda missed a rebound. It bounced off. It looked like it bounced off his face. I, I, I don't even know what happened. Jay, like, I need to find it. But there was a possession I vividly remember. Tatum and Pritchard just fucking watching the ball bounce between them and just yeah. go to the Pacers. And so I'm going to go find it. But past that, like, what, what was the biggest pro? I can't. Clips aren't up yet. But like. I don't even know what the other problems were in this game outside of like, like, like I mentioned, like there were some rough defensive possessions where some guys got to the lane a little bit easier, but it, it was like 75% of the problems in this game were just get a fucking rebound and you're fine. Like, <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, yeah, when you're taking what 19 shots, 21 shots less than the opponent. It's not going to matter. I mean, it does matter, I guess, because they won that they shot 54% and 48 or 47% from three. It really yeah. helps that it was an efficient night for the Stars. Tatum and Brown missed a combined 13 shots out of, what is that, 34 between the two of them. So it's a pretty good, get, pretty good game. Derek White shot 50% from the field. Porzingis, like you said, was really the only one that was off. Second good Drew game in a row. 17 points on 6 of 8. I really love when Holiday has a good game because it's almost always done efficiently because that's the only way he can get his buckets. He's not getting a million shots. So. That is truly the biggest found money thing ever, even though it's not because he is an all-star level player, but they just don't ask him to do anything. And eventually he's just going to have nights where he catches fire like tonight. And there's nothing the opposing team can do about it. Who's this, D. White? No, Holiday. Holiday, sorry, yes. Um, I I missed the name. I was trying to find something. Yeah, I I mean, Holiday's been really good for like the past week. (laughs) He's just been making all the shots. Second good Holiday game in a row. He's been great. Uh, D. White was also great. I, there weren't really many problems offensively. They shot fucking 54-47 from the field. There's not much to complain about there. It's just uh, the rebounding. I, I always get a, what were you out. looking for? The the rebounding clips? Uh, yeah, I was waiting yeah. for the clips to pop up, and I was looking at um some other thing that came in my email. I have ADHD, man. I can't. I, I struggle. I usually am fine, but I, I like I go down the rabbit hole. I mean, we fucking searched for Jack Cooley for 20 minutes on a pregame show once. <laughs> you searched <laughs> for him. I, exactly. I go down to rabbit holes, man. No. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think like 
what else is there to take from this game? Like they just couldn't fucking rebound. Everything else was fine. The credit to well, Pacers. Joe, Joe I guess. got his blown lead wish. Yeah, yeah. And to their to credit, to their credit, like you mentioned, like they did lock in at the moment they needed to. Like it sucks to see them blow it like they did, and probably want to avoid that in general. However, like you mentioned, that last defensive possession was huge. I, I thought the the last few minutes of offense were good. Um, was it? It wasn't the last few minutes, but like a good example of closing quarters. Well, Jason Tatum end of the third drives all the way down the court, finds Kata under the hoop. Like that's big yes. time. I every bone in my body thought he was taking a step back three, and <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> so it's what, it's what you're accustomed to. Like when I complain hmm. about that stuff, that's why I complain. Oh, yeah. Not not because I think it's an awful shot, but I don't think it's towards the top of the list of shots the Celtics could get. And since he, I don't even know the cutoff, but like since he started making them again, it feels like he's taking them less. If that makes sense. Is that, is Maybe. that backwards? You know what I'm saying though? It feels like ever since that rough Depends stretch in the, the season, day. ever since that rough stretch in the season where we were talking about it, fucking every show, um, it feels like he's toned back and started honing in on his decision-making a little bit more, which is good. Is what you need. He had seven assists tonight. He had 37 and seven with two turnovers, two blocks and a steal shot. Well, like really good Tatum game. Like we start, uh, said at the top of the show, but um, I feel like he's been much better with his, excuse me, decision making overall. Also, for what it's worth, almost every starter except for Drew Holiday was a negative plus minus in this game. Sam Hauser plus fourteen, Pritchard plus twelve, Kata plus fifteen. That lineup of I think it was those three. <coughs> excuse me, sorry, Hauser, Pritchard, Kata. I think it was like it was either there were two lineups. It was those three, and then White and Porzingis. For a stretch, I think, and then those three, and then Holiday and Tatum for a stretch. Those lineups were really good. Like those three guys played really well. Hauser made his threes. Um, Pritchard didn't shoot the ball well, but he was grabbing rebounds. He, he like he was a nice facilitator. And then Kata, we already talked about, but like the bench deserves a bunch of credit for this game too. Um, they, they made a big impact when it when it mattered. Past that, I, it, like just grab a rebound. You're muted. Sorry, I didn't hear you start talking. Oh, my bad. I am muted. This team has showed us this week that they're resilient, whether it's when they're behind or when things are kind of falling apart. They've got the balls to kind of buckle down and do what they need to do. The only time I think we've seen them not do a great job of this was, ironically enough, the last time they played the Pacers when there was the Halliburton-less team that came back on them. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I don't remember a ton of blown lead games, which is good because I hate them. Blown lead game. So what there have been a lost? few because there was one that I was like, ah, like yeah, the Bucks one was not great, but they still won. Um, but that wasn't a blown lead. They just got stopped. It was no, no, it was a blown lead. The first one when they actually won. Oh, they oh, oh, sorry. The entire game and only won by. I'm three. just. I know, no, you're right, you're right. I'm just thinking of losses. Um, yeah, blown leads. That's a good question. I'm gonna go look real quick. I don't think, like you like, said, I don't think there have been many. I, I don't think Pacers there game. were a lot of times I was like, damn, I really wish I took insurance. I mean, against the Raptors in the in-season tournament, they were up real good at half, and then it didn't end well. I mean, they won. The Rockets? But... Were they up in the Rockets game, or were they losing and then they came back? Uh, I remember. I'm looking quick. It, it got a little shaky in Houston. <laughs> yeah, they were up by like six, 17 in the third, and then the, they cut it down to like three, but they never lost the lead, and it was never tied. So... Not exactly the same, but that was a shaky one. Toronto. Toronto always is like, what is happening? And then Derek White hit the three to close it out. But they have been better. And I think that's a testament to this team in general, like just being more mature than past Celtics teams. Um, it is like looking at these stats, it's fucking crazy. They won this game. For, like, they got out shot by so many. <laughs> 108 shots to 87 is insane. Like all of the the things Missoula stretches, he's like, oh, you know, win the the margins, take more shots, more free throws, more rebounds, more stuff like that. They lost a lot of those, in this and they one. wore the wrong uniforms. Uh, they did, they did. That they were punishing uh, the Celtics. The, yeah, the I was like half Celtics. hoping they would lose, so I could go on Twitter and bitch. <laughs> Man. Uh, I've sworn a lot in this podcast. I'm just like realizing now that I've just been swearing a lot and I'm waiting for the guy to come in the comments and yell at us for swearing. Um, I think that's about it though. I don't, I don't have anything else from this game. Do we, did we cover it all? Like, yes, making sure I didn't miss any of the performances. I think, I think we got it. Oh, th- quickly to end thoughts on Siakam in a Pacers uniform. It was the first time we saw it. Sick. Fine. 
Okay, cool. <laughs> I thought he looked good. I thought he gave him something different. He was uh, pretty good in this game. Neesmith also looks cool. He hit 26, 12, and 7. Anyways, thank you all for tuning in. We appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe to How About Them Celtics. We appreciate it very much. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple, make sure to follow us. Leave us five stars. Thank you for listening. I'll let Sam wrap it up. Hey, thank you very much for listening or watching. If you're watching, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our daily uploads. Oh, and game recaps like this. Sorry. Congrats to the better who won $2,700. Oh, yeah. We were like, yeah, we're going to talk about that on the show. We'll open we just it. didn't. It never happened. Yeah. League leaders in our pregame chat came in. He goes, I'm betting 100 bucks on Neesmith to make the first three of the game. And we're like, what are you going to win if he hits? And he said $2,700. And then Neesmith hit the first three of the game. Yeah. He won 20. So, hey, if you want betting advice, come on over. To- <laughs> mm, <definitely> no. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, All right, my but, bad. yeah, subscribe to YouTube. Uh, follow us on Spotify and Apple. If you do, you'll get the audio versions of all the games, game recaps, and full pods right to your inbox. You can also find us via email, hbtcpod at gmail.com. We read your emails each time we record a pod, so we love to hear from you. So do that. We're recording tomorrow or later today when you hear this. Uh, you can also find us on socials at How About Them Seas, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Facebook is just the name of the podcast. You can find us live there a half hour before every single game. We're doing that there on YouTube and also on Twitter. Jack's Twitter is at Jack Simone NBA. Mine is at Samuel France NBA. It's a cross